So in this video we're going to start with some simple animation and end up being able to drive an augmented reality car on a table. So the first thing we're going to look at is just bouncing a circle backwards and forwards across an image. So this first part has been covered in previous videos, it's fairly straightforward. The bit that might be new is this uh, setting of the offset X and Y. And that's what we're going to look at animating those parameters. So this bottom section is the new bit. This is what actually does the animation. So what we have is the ability to call a request animation frame function. We pass it the function that we want to call. Here it is, the function tick. And we have a timestamp as well, which we should use to even out uh, the frame rate. But we'll come back to that later. And at the end of the function, we just call the request again to get a new frame. So we're going to have a D, a direction, that's what we're going to add on to the offset X each frame. And when it gets too big, we're going to set it negative so it comes back. And when it gets too small, we'll set it positive. So it goes forward. So let's see it in action. And there it is. Very simple. Just bouncing backwards and forwards. So let's do something a little bit more complicated. This first part again is pretty much the same except I've set a fill color. So the circle is a bit easier to see. And if we come down, we can see that now we've got two variables, one for X and one for Y. So we're essentially going to deal with them separately, adding on to both each frame and both of them bouncing at their own edges. So when we combine them together, we get this sort of effect. So the X and Y are both being treated almost independently. When they combine together, we get this effect of it bouncing around inside the box. So going on to augmented reality car, we want to stop and drive it in a certain direction. And we know it's X and Y coordinate, and we're going to know it's velocity. Maybe speed might be more appropriate, but we'll stick with V for this. And we know heading, and we know these because we're going to be adjusting them as we go. But what we want to know each frame is where we're going to move it to. And we want to know what we're going to add on to Y and what we're going to add on to X to get the new location. So we're essentially ending up with sort of two triangles, one where we want to know the horizontal part and one where we want to know the vertical part. And all of this should start to be triggering memories in you now. So for the offset in X, it's just sine, the heading times the velocity, and for dy it's a cosine. That's just basic trigonometry. We're going to do that calculation every single frame. Okay, so this is also new in the videos that I've produced anyway, the ability to add some HTML. And we've got a set of divs to control the velocity, so we can add some controls on the screen, and some to control the steering. And it's very simple. Each of them is a button, which is basically just a square. And the velocity container just places them in the bottom left. And the steering container places them in the bottom right. And it's as simple as that. So here we're loading in the 3D model of the car. The scaling parameters we've covered before. But instead of offset X and offset Y, we have an X, Y and Z translation. Those are the ones that we're going to animate to get it driving around. And the rotation as well, we'll look at it. So here are some of the parameters, the heading and the velocity that were covered in that previous section. Those we're going to use to do the calculation to work out where to place the car. So if we come down, this is the function for the animation. But these are the controls, so we're going to add event listeners, this is fairly standard JavaScript, onto those divs so that we know when they've been touched. The velocity will add and subtract to. For the steering, just to make it a bit easier, we're going to either be always turning left, always turning right, or going straight on fixed amounts, rather than adding and subtracting from it. This is the function, so each turn we add on the amount that we're turning, either to the left or the right, and to change the car's rotation, we need to convert that to degrees. This is the trigonometry bit, and once we've calculated that, we just add it on to the X and Y. All right, so let's see that in action. So we press the A div, get it going forward. 
press the L, we can start it turning or straight. And essentially we're doing this because on the mobile device it doesn't understand uh, mouse down, mouse up, and things like that. All right. So it, it doesn't look too realistic, but it's just a starting point. There's a bit of juddering again, which maybe we should use the timestamp to even out the frame rate. But the basic principle is there. You've got controls on the screen. You can press them. You can animate. And if I had more hands, I'd be able to show you moving around the tablet to get different perspectives on it to show that it looks like it's sort of sitting on the table.